Hi, this is Dr. Dan here from the MedicalMastery.com podcast. Today I'm discussing MCAT scores. How are they calculated? How can you do better on the MCAT? And best of all, how can you predict how well you're going to do on the real thing months ahead of time? That's what we'll be discussing. Recently, a future doctor said that she made a 16% on a full-length Kaplan MCAT test and asked me what to do about it. She was pretty distraught. Now, clearly, 16% is not good, but what is good? You know, you're not going to get 100% on those things. In fact, Kaplan has been known to have some tests that have more of a predominance of the really difficult questions that you encounter. So, in my experience, what I've seen and, and counseled people um, through MedicalMastery.com is that you know about the, the one third of the questions on the MCAT are pretty low you know, hanging fruit from the tree. Pretty easy to get if you've taken the prerequisite classes and if you have uh, paid attention, you were awake, took some notes, maybe even reviewed a little bit for the full length, you ought to be getting about 30%. So I was concerned about her 16% and why she wasn't missing some of those easy ones. Um, about the next third is, is what you can expect to get from an adequate preparation of um, the MCAT and you should progress over time from about six months prior to the MCAT over that time you should see your score ranging from 30 up to the 60 70 percent range that's a normal progression as you've done the prerequisites taken about seven full-length practice tests timed with the exact number of minutes breaks in between everything exactly the same as test day you should see some improvement the reason why you don't often get the score of 45 you know, there's a big break between 30 and 45 on MCAT scores is because the need for a bell curve, and if you haven't taken statistics yet, I recommend it before medical school. Um, if they made the test easy, uh, then the curve would kind of come up and then it would abruptly end at the 100% mark and you wouldn't be able to separate the rest of that curve to see who the really elite people are and they love to do that. Okay, it's the only way they can keep us from getting 100% because we're generally a more educated, motivated, committed, and competitive group. So all medical school tests, including the MCAT, um, have very difficult questions built in to keep the curve down here in, in a normal shape. Uh, the sad part is that they do pick an appropriate cutoff of that tail to say people that score less than this fail. It's usually about the bottom 14% or so. So believe it or not, even on the MCAT, you're in competition with your peers. It's not between you and the wrong numbers because it's normalized across the nation and each test carries its own weight. I go into this topic in much more detail, including um, actual statistics from 2009 for the osteopathic schools and all the MD schools in the United States. Um, there are links directly to those charts and reports um, on medicalmastery.com under the, this episode's number 17. So just a couple of announcements. The Medical Mastermind community uh, website that I'm building is in its final stages of production. So if you're interested in joining a, a motivated group of individuals with live con consulting with me and peers uh, that are farther advanced than you, um, be sure to get on the early notification email list at medicalmastery.com. The last one is that the pre-med CD of the month club is now in its 12th month of production and I've got the infrastructure worked out now. So that I can uh, mass produce and now I'm going to leave a, a permanent um, pricing link uh, that you can see from the home page to tell you more about how to get involved with that. Take care and Godspeed on your next exam.